morning, everyone. Um, the next talk will be about up install your neighborhood, and it will be held by Andreas Mund. Enjoy. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning from my side. After uh, Matt Doc's nice talk about the uh, frame of the emerging countries all over the world, I want to take you now next to your home, to your neighborhood. Uh, your neighborhood is now sitting in the new queue waiting for FTP master's approval. No, just kidding. But maybe your neighborhood is sitting in a pub, in a local pub, like uh, it is every two weeks in my, the village I live. And we started some uh, GNU Linux meeting there, some workshop help desk, so you can go there. Everybody's invited to drop by, help, get help, just to chat. And of course, you bring, can bring your laptop or computer and have it installed, learn how to install Debian, how to use it. So in the beginning, this is simple. Everybody knows this. I don't think I have to spend much time on it. Uh, you fetch the installer media, you run the installation, you boot the system, and usually you have to do some manual configuration, user has some preferences, and so on. We started then with uh, kind of a special event, so call, we called it install party, and we make these posters uh, all over the village, more or less, and made some advertising, <coughs> and invited everybody on a Saturday uh, afternoon to do this in a bit of a, a bigger uh, scale. And uh, the question was, how are we going to do that? Running around with CDs, with USB sticks, and so on, seems to make troubles. So we thought about a better idea, how is this done in enterprises? It's done with a, a proxy technologies, with a netboot installer, and we thought about uh, setting up such, an, such a small box, and we called it install box. What does it look like? A friend of mine found this nice, industrial, great PC, uh, in, his, in the basement of his company. And the nice thing is it has two uh, network interfaces, and you can install Debian on it. And that was our <coughs> uh, hardware. We tried to put that install mechanism on. Of course, it's not needed to have this hardware. You can do the same with a virtual machine on every laptop. Um, it's slightly more complicated, because usually you don't have to uh, Ethernet interfaces, but you can use, but you can use the <coughs> uh, VLAN interface, and it uh, works the same in the end, more or less. Okay, what does this install box need? <coughs> I already said the hardware is desirable to have these two network interface cards, and you need about 10 gigabytes of disk space. And then uh, we need to configure the network. We need a <coughs> We want to uh, connect to the pubs network. Usually, you get a, a DHCP uh, an uh, the dynamic address <coughs> from the uh, from the outside, more or less. <coughs> and then we have our internal network where we <coughs> are going to set up our own addressing. Then we use PX boot net install. And we want to install 64-bit. And sometimes people show up with really old laptops, old hardware. So we will also need some 38-bit uh, installer. And as services, we need to set up DHCP, as I said, DNS, a trivial FTP uh, service, and a package cache, it's something we also want because uh, the bandwidth is rather limited. So I will now quickly go through uh, how, how this can be set up. Um, I wrote this down extensively 
to really copy and paste it and set up this machine for your own, but I now will only quickly rush over it. Okay, first you start with a standard Jeffy installation, maybe uh, at an SSH server to log in onto the machine. And in the beginning, you have uh, after the installation, one network slot will be already configured to use DHCP. We will use that for uh, the other network. And <coughs> well, first step is always a good idea. Install ETC Keeper to make sure you don't lose anything when you're doing all this. Then we add the second. We configure the second interface for our uh, static, uh, con uh, we add this static configuration and we install DNS mask. It's a, a, a simple, for this simple use case, it's a nice thing. We don't need to configure much. We just have to tell it in first step what the DHCP range is we want to <coughs> supply to machines in the local area network. So then where do we get the netboot images from? There is a package which is called DI netboot assistant and you just install this package, create a TFTP boot directory, and then you can, uh, with these two commands, the inetboot assistant install Jesse, and the same with arch i386, you can make these uh, netboot images ready. <coughs> and we just have to look how to, uh, to we just have to <coughs> tell our DNS mask to serve these uh, images at the right time. So we <coughs> um, put the path in there, in the DNS mask configuration, enable the TFTP server, and <coughs> well, tell him where to uh, find PXE uh, binary. And we then start, we start the service and if we check uh, what we need and what we already have, we will find that DHCP IP address works. We have DNS resolution, PXE installer boot works, but we don't have uh, web access yet, and we don't have a package cache, cache, cache so far. Okay, how to do that? There are different ways. Uh, I did it with Shorewall because I used it in another setup. <coughs> it's a, a, a firewall uh, front end, I would say. <coughs> uh, what do we have to do there? Just install Shorewall, switch it on. We want IP forwarding, <coughs> and then we just use the two interface example configuration. We just have to copy it in the, to the configuration and uh, modify it slightly. Uh, we want the local net to access also this install box. And we want, uh, from, from everywhere, we want to be able to log in via SSH just to um, simplify maintenance. So after that, we will have also web access, but no package cache so far. So we install Squid. And this is now a, some uh, more modifications are needed to uh, make sure that the packages are, uh, are cached. Uh, I won't go into details there, <coughs> but after we've done that, it's by the way uh, taken from a package squid dev proxy, <coughs> this configuration. Uh, we have set up the package cache as well. Now we want to make one other modification. We want to have a transparent uh, cache. We don't want to configure the, uh, the proxy on the, on the computers that are going to be installed because then the people go home and this proxy is, is not there anymore and uh, it doesn't work as expected. So we want that all traffic going to the outside is, uh, to port 80 is going to be redirected to our package cache. 
And this is done with these few lines of um, uh, configuration. And then we can check that in the access log and we see after having downloaded the package, it's cached and it's uh, just uh, resolved from the cache if it's required again. Okay, so far we're done. All, our, all the stuff we wanted to implement is working. And we can PXC boot a client. We get this uh, ugly menu, <laughs> I would say. Uh, we can then choose an installer. We get the usual Debian uh, installer menu. And this is uh, a slightly improved system where we have some monitoring for the uh, script proxy. You see the green uh, fields are all uh, hits of the cache or of the memory and only very little packages or uh, the package lists or something which uh, is, is, uh, is downloaded from, um, from, uh, from the internet, but most of the stuff is uh, from the cache. Okay, so far, this is the simple setup, and now we want to improve it even more, and I want to show a technique which is well known for many years, but it's quite... Um, can be quite confusing or it's not easy to use. It's very powerful, but also a bit complex. And I just want to show what we did in our case. Um, what is preceding? <coughs> well, preceding means when you do the installation, you ask a lot of question, questions. And preceding means that you answer the questions in advance. So how is it done? Uh, you need uh, to prepare a pre configuration file. There is an example provided by uh, on the link below. You need to make it uh, available. There are several ways how you can do that. HTTP, TFTP, and even some more. And you have to tell the installer where and how to fetch this image, uh, this, this uh, preceding file. Okay, how are we going to do that? We use the TFTP server of the DNS mask, so we don't need to install anything else. We just uh, create a location there in the TFTP server root and put there our, uh, our precede configuration. And uh, some cosmetics, we want to resolve the install box with the name install box. So we put the name into the ETC hosts. That's where DNS masks looks for, uh, in, the first, in the first attempt, looks for names uh, uh, to, to resolve names. OK, then the precede file. Um, we use that one. Um, I have to say, we, we don't want to do anything automatically. We want also to uh, some kind of educate <coughs> the people to show them that it's not complicated to do an installation and so that they at home uh, can do an installation on their own. But we set a few things which we uh, think for our case are quite useful. So we don't uh, want the root account. We switch that off, the, the question. Uh, usually, unfortunately, we need some uh, non-free firmware. So we switch that on. We choose a mirror, which is next to the village, um, and we use KDE because we think that's uh, kind of uh, what people expect or what they are used to when they come from the Windows world. Um, a few extra packages, Adblock Plus is useful, and as I said, some firmware, and we switch on uh, time service. Okay, how do we tell the installer to use that file? We have to add some uh, node in the uh, in the uh, boot boot line. And with this setup, I show here it's as simple as URL equals tftp double, double point slash slash inbox. 
So when we now install with that boot line, we find uh, in the um, log lines like proceed, successfully loaded proceed file, and then you know uh, anything works as it should. You can also grab, if you, if you miss that, uh, at the, the moment where this line uh, is created, you can also use grab proceed var log syslog, and then you also end up with this line. So this is a nice check, because if you try it, try it here and there, then uh, sometimes it takes a bit until it works as you uh, think it should. Okay, a few further notes. Um, you can... Uh, specify these pre-configuration pre files also by the, by the DHCP server. You can also uh, answer questions already within the uh, boot parameters. <coughs> uh, you can set a debug parameter, which is uh, useful when you try this. Uh, default values can be modified as well. And there is a boot parameter automated install which um, helps when you want to proceed questions that are asked even before the uh, network is set up. So it, it, it shifts the configuration of the net network to an early stage so uh, that um, yeah, mo in the extreme all questions can be answered by proceeding. Okay. If you want to do a completely automatic installation, <coughs> uh, you need to answer all questions asked, and you can put an extra line to the netboot DI netboot assistant menu. I showed it's shown here in the middle. Um, you add auto equals true, priority critical. And you tell, uh, um, again, the location where it finds the pro uh, proceed file. And then you rebuild the menu. <coughs> and after that, you have an another entry here in the, in the boot menu, which is booted after a timeout. And then uh, this entry is booted, and the installation goes through, and the machine is ready. OK, there are some limitations. Um, this, this proceeding, in my opinion, is fine for more or less standard installations. You can do real, you can do in the end, you can do anything, but it's a question of how, uh, how, how to handle the complexity. And um, yeah, it's it's kind of fragile. Sometimes things are changed, and. Um, yeah, you have limited logging, logging capabilities. It's all there, but it's sometimes tedious to figure it out <coughs> and to find what you need. And it also takes a lot of time to try again and try again until you succeed. So if you want to do more complex uh, things, then usually you would probably use something like Puppet, Chef, Ansible, CF Engine, or by. Um, two years ago, I gave a talk about the Debian LAN, which tries to solve this problem. It's uh, a, a small project inside Debian, which has the goal to set up um, a, a local area network within Debian uh, as simple as possible. And if you're interested in that, I recommend to Go back and watch the video. Uh, slides are also online. I will skip this now completely, but I left the slides in here, uh, kind of refurbished slides, just to, uh, if you may look this up later, you have uh, the, the complete line. But now I switch uh, to the summary and conclusions. I hope, hope I gave you an idea how to set such an I install box, uh, how to configure DNS mask, DI netboot assistant, shawl and squid, with a few lines of configuration. 
I hope I could give you an idea about how to use preceding to get rid of boring questions. And as I said, for more complex installations, take a look at Phi and Debian Lance. Here are some uh, links where you can find further information, more information. I think the, the experts about preceding are in the auditorium as well, <laughs> sitting here in the front. So if you have really special questions, maybe I can't answer them, but we will find someone who can. And I want to say thank you, and maybe there are some questions. non-technical question about the publicity and telling in a uh, pub that you're doing the install party. Uh, uh, could you tell me, tell us more about this, how, how it went, so some tricks, what you learned, do's and don'ts, mostly the, the non-technical stuff. Uh. Uh, you mean how we, how we did a bit more about the install party? And telling it uh, to people outside of the usual technical area. How did you get in contact uh, with them? Okay, um, I think this is very much uh, uh, depends on where you live. So I, I ended up in a uh, rather small village which, which uh, d don't, doesn't have any really much geeks, but I found a few neighbors um, which are interested and I, uh, we started to, to do some uh, uh, using Debian, and they got interested. And there is a <coughs> uh, this, this pub it does a lot of, um, it's very open to cultural uh, things, and it, uh, you can, there are concerts from time to time, and it's really, they have a, a repair workshop once in a month where you can bring old, uh, old kitchen gear and they try to repair it and so on. And there we started with this idea and we asked um, the guy from the pub if he would be interested to serve as a, a location for such a venue and he was interested and uh, that's how we get started and then we created this, <coughs> um, uh, this, this, this advertising and asked friends and neighbors and so on and it's really in a small scale, and it's probably uh, different from how you would do it in a in a larger town because it's more anonymous in in this in this in this town. But the other one, uh, I've I've shown you. Uh, oops, back. Oops. Uh, oops. How can I do that? The other one was on a, in a small on a small conference in. Um, it was called Tubix near Tübingen. Uh, maybe I can show you that. And we just recycled the, uh, this, this banner. So it was, uh, we offered it, it as a, along the, the conference. It was a one day's conference and we offered that uh, to do installations. And we prepared that one. Any more questions? You um, so one question about security. I mean, uh, when you're on a local network like this, there might not be a malicious intent, but you, if you are in a more office environment um, or in a virtualization environment, maybe there are someone trying to intercept your initial boot. Uh, is there any protection against this, like signing or e providing a hash of the pre-seed file or something like this? Or could you talk some about security aspects? At the moment, there are no security, uh, no, um, <coughs> no methods against these attacks implemented at all. So this is really for a small scale where, where you more or less know the people or you you, you can look what they are doing and 
uh, these are people that you are happy when they uh, try something else than their windows and it's not the, the kind of um, uh, geeky uh, hacker, hacker space as we have it here. So it's really something completely different. So I think the, the, <laughs> the probability that there someone tries to hack the system uh, is uh, rather low. Okay, uh, I'm around for the whole week, so if someone wants to know more or uh, has questions, whatever, uh, just contact me. <laughs>